Hey, shalom family. Happy Sabbath. Waiting for Brother Gamliel to get on. We'll start class in a second. Title is called Why the New Moon Can't Dictate the Sabbath. So, Lord's willing, we'll start class in a couple minutes. I pray that you guys enjoy your Sabbath and enjoy your day of rest. Just waiting for the video to load up so you can get on. Happy Sabbath, Dad. Hope your weekend is going good. I'm crazy. It's fine listening to the class. Just video to load up. Okay, peace. Peace. All right. You want to pray or you just want to jump right into it? Uh, let's just pray right quick. I'll pray right quick. All right. <laughs> Quiet down. Quiet down. We're praying. Ready? You ready? Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Lord God, we pray to give us good understanding and have mercy on us, Lord God. And let there be peace because of your commandments and the knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray to comfort the hearts of them that believe by your Holy Ghost and by the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ. All right. Amen. Malachi, didn't you hear me say that you're praying? Then you shut up. What's the matter with you? My well, praise supposed to be sleepy. It's a day of rest. I'll praise it. But um, happy Sabbath to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Lord's willing today, we'll be going over the new moon. And how, according to the scriptures, it cannot dictate the Sabbath because a lot of people have been going around. Saying, well, I've been seeing it lately. This doctrine has been around for a while. A lot of Israelites are going around saying that the Sabbath is dictated by the new moon. And those who do not follow the Sabbath according to the new moon are in error. But as the scriptures, we're going to bring up the scriptures to show that they are actually in error if you are keeping the Sabbath by the new moon. So we're going to start off in Genesis 1 and build up the lesson from there. You ready, brother? Or you just want to start? Go. Yeah, I'm good. Where are you starting at? We're starting in Genesis 1. I'll read it, but I was just saying if you're ready. Hey, peace be upon you, brother. Glad to see you online. Right, I'm going to uh, go ahead and I'm going to start in Genesis 1. I'm going to read in um, Genesis 1 and 14. Actually, I'm going to start in verse. Yeah, I saw that verse 14. Genesis 1 and 14. And God said, let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day and the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So now here, the moon is the moon. And, the moon. and he says what? And let there be for lights and the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day, which is the sun, and the lesser night to rule the night. He made the stars also. So the lesser night to move, excuse me, the lesser light to rule the night was the moon. And to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide it, the light from the darkness. And God said the fourth day. So what happened here? The most high created the sun and the moon upon the fourth day. We have to understand that. So upon the fourth day, the Most High created them for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. So we have to understand that. Now let's jump down to verse 31. Actually, let me jump, let me jump down to verse yeah, 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. 
and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So the Most High was what? Creating the days all the way up until the sixth day. That's what we have to understand. So day, he created the sun and the moon. And it says what? He made the two great lights, the greater to rule the day, which was the sun, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So he made the sun and the moon upon the fourth day. And it says what? Verse 31, and God saw everything that he had made. So he created everything all the way up until the, the, the sixth day. And it was good. And the evening and morning were the sixth day. Chapter 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. Verse 2. And on the seventh day, God re ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. And then, the most high on the fourth day, made the moon on the fourth day. And on the seventh day, three days later, he rested and work which God has created and made. So now a lot of confusion. And here is when you read Genesis 1 and 14, because that's what the scriptures that a lot of people use, they they run Genesis 1 and 14 and say, see, he created the moon for seasons, for days, and for years, and for time, which is true, yes. But that does not dictate the Sabbath because why? We're going to go to Leviticus 23. You, you, uh, you have anything to ask before I go to Leviticus 23? And actually, in verse 14, let me see. Verse 14, it says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years so it's not just the moon that's the sign the moon is a sign for seasons the sun is the sign for uh days and you know using them both together you you get your days and your years by looking at the phases of the moon and the sun up and down or <clears throat> you know what i'm saying how how the sun changes itself they both there for signs and for seasons so that's, that's it's just that scripture is not just about the moon. Go ahead. Well, actually, before I get that, let me get Psalms. I'm gonna read Psalms before I forget. But it, this goes with Genesis one. I'm gonna read this because this is another, another scripture that they run to and they use this scripture. Psalms one o four and uh, nineteen. He appointed the moon for season. The sun knoweth his going. So it says right here. He appointed the moon for seasons. So why? Because we have, we have to understand that what? That the moon dictates the season. So for the people that's reading these other books, this is a cut also for the other books. It says that you use the moon for seasons because it's going to cause us to be in air. Because if we know, according to the Hebrew community, which I did a class on this already a while back, according to the Hebrew community, you have to create a community number. So if you are... If you are following the Gregorian calendar, which most of us do, the Gregorian calendar, we have 30 and 31 days in this calendar that we follow today. But the Hebrew calendar, if you follow the moon, the full moon and the new moon, it has 28 and 29 days. So by following the Greco-Roman calendar, incorporating the feast days, it's going to throw the days off every year. It would take 9 or 10 days every so often. And the book of Jubilees, it says that the Most High made a mistake, and now you have to follow the Jubilee calendar. So, but how does the Most High make a mistake? When he just tells you right here in Psalms 104 and 19, he appointed for season. So we have the moon to calculate the feast days. Beginning what? With the new moon, the moon, going into what? Going into the full moon. We have to understand that. And those is how we calculate the feast days. Because why? The new moon, the dark moon. It repeats every it cycle every 14 days, every so 14 to 15 days, it goes into what? The full moon. And then the cycle refreshes itself. The full moon every 14 to 15 days, give or take. 
It goes into the Sunni, so that's how the Hebrew days are 28 and 29 days. We have to do the Sunni, so we use the moon, so we, can, we don't even have to worry about the calendar. We can look at the moon and tell the signs of the feast. We can tell when the seasons are changing by the moon, by the temperature, by going outside looking at the moon, and we can tell what month we're going to be. So go ahead. Yeah, we can continue to follow that. So now go to Leviticus 23 and start at verse 1. Leviticus 23 and 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation, even these are my feast. So pay attention to verse 1. It says what? Even these are my feast. And then it's going to go to verse 3. It says, Six days work shall be done. Excuse me. Six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Now notice, it doesn't call the seventh day a feast. It says, these are my feast, and then it goes in to specifically name the Sabbath. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. And for the application, you shall do no in. It is the Sabbath of the Lord and all your dwellings. So it, notice how it says, these are my feast, and then it goes in to say the Sabbath day. But it doesn't include the Sabbath with the feast. How do we know this? Verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord. So the new moon, I mean, the, the new moon is a sign for seasons. It's a sign for feasts, appointed days. But what? It says, and it's going to explain what the feasts of the Lord are that are dictated by the moon. These are the feasts of the Lord. Even holy convocations. Turn it down for a little bit. These are the um, feasts of the Lord. Even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their season. So these are all dedicated, I mean, dictated by the moon, which is what? Yeah. Day of Atonement, Tabernacles, all these are what? And if I'm missing some, you can read them all in Leviticus 23. These are the ones that are dictated by the moon. Because why? You get the new moon 14 days later, 14 or 15 days later, you get on the 14th day even, on the full moon, it's Passover. So how do you know? They celebrating Passover on the right day, during the full moon. Because why? The new moon starts at the beginning of the month, Numbers 10 and 10. The new moon starts at the beginning of the month. 14 days later, at even, is the Passover. So you look up at the at the moon, when the moon is full, 14th day at even, going into the 15th day, the moon should be full in the sky. And that's Passover. Tabernacles, the same thing. Around, same thing. When you do tabernacles on the seventh month, the 15th day on the seventh month, when you look up in the sky, it shall be a full moon. So that's what we have to understand. So now we're getting into why the new moon cannot dictate the Sabbath before I go any further. You got anything to add before I go any further? Just, just to say that uh, <clears throat> when you read from the beginning, and it mentions the Sabbath right here, six, six days shall work be done, but the seventh is the Sabbath of the Lord. And then the next part, it starts talking about seasons. So the first part was talking about the Sabbath. It's making it clear. We just, we talking about the regular Sabbath day every week, the seventh day. And then these other feast days right here, or these feast days right here, the holy convocations. And it even made that clear. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, uh, which he shall proclaim in their season. So it's separating... Um, Passover, Tabernacles, uh, Pentecost, uh, what's, what's the other one? So Memorial of the Trumpets and all of them. It's separating those days from the regular Sabbath day. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot what I was going to say. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so now, this, one, this class is probably not going to be that long. It's probably going to be a short class. Now let's go into um oh Sam, okay yeah I remember. okay go ahead <laughs> also if 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 it is saying in their seasons like you were saying the the full moon lets you know that this is the feast day if it's saying on the fourteenth day of the month um at even and that's going into the fifteenth day it's going to be a full moon you know either on that fourteenth day or the fifteenth day or somewhere in there to let you know that it's a feast day 
Not only that, uh, certain seasons, the moon, the moon makes certain colors. There's certain uh, the phases and certain colors that show in the moon to show you what season it is. You know what I'm saying? To show you this is the this is these are the winter months that are coming up. When you look up her and see how close or how far away it is or what color it is, you know what I'm saying, what phase is in. Uh we don't know nothing like that. We don't know nothing like that because we our people do not celebrate these holy days. We don't celebrate these days for nothing, you know what I'm saying? We we know January, February, March, April, you know, whatever. And it's December and certain days. We don't know nothing about the moon. All we know is uh you know the so-called white man's calendar and his traditions that he gave to us but we go by the moon now we got to start questioning what does that mean why does the moon turn red and what does that signify why does it turn orange and yellow and what does that signify why is it um half full uh no light at all or pieces of it is seen why does that happen you got to ask that it's it's for they're for science and they're there to tell us what season it is, what time of the month it is, you know what I'm saying, uh, whether or not it is a feast day or not. Go ahead. Right. That's what we, right. And that's what we wanted to get into you know? about the feast day. So now let's go on to 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapter 20. Where the mother of you was going outside? Mm-hmm. So why are you coming in here? I'm just looking at Shalom, sister. Happy Sabbath. Glad to see you online. Hello. We're going to First Samuel. We're going to read about the new moon in First Samuel 20 real quick. And how we can we're going to show you through the scripture that the new moon cannot dictate the Sabbath by what happens with David during the time of Saul and when he was on the run. So First Samuel chapter 20. That verse. No, let's start that. Verse um, seventeen. I think verse sixteen. First Samuel twenty and sixteen. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, "Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemies." And Jonathan caused David to swear again because he loved him, for he loved him as he loved his own soul. Verse 18, now pay attention to verse 18, 20 and 18. Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon, and thou shalt be missed, because thy seat will be empty. So it says what? Tomorrow is going to be the new moon. And when thou hast stayed three days, then thou shalt go down quickly, and come to the place where thou didst hide thyself, when the business is hand and remain by the stone Ezel. So now it says what? Tomorrow is the new moon. Now pay attention to that key verse. I'm going to jump down to verse 24. So David hid himself in the field. And when the new moon was come, the king sat him down to eat meat. So now the, verse 24, it is actually the new moon. So now it's the beginning of the new month. The new moon is this day. On verse 24, it says, He hid himself in the field. And when the new moon was come, the king sat him down to eat meat. So now this is the new moon. And after this, what? David went back out into the field. What? Jonathan shot the arrows. David had to go on the run because Saul was trying to kill him. So he was still on the run from Saul. We have to understand that. So at this time, when you read at the verse, at the verse 41 and 42, David said his goodbye to Jonathan. And he was what? He went off the that Saul was trying to kill him. So now, chapter 21, verse 1. Then came David to Hamiliac, the priest. So Hamiliac was a high priest. So this is a very key, important point of the scripture to know who Hamiliac is. He is the high priest. And Hamiliac was afraid at the meeting of David and said unto him, Why art thou alone and no man with thee? And David said unto Hamiliac, the priest, the king have commanded me a business, and that said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee. But I have commanded thee, and I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. So now what? So 
I praised a lot. Saw he didn't want him reporting him. Also, he told him this story. Now, this is what? Verse 3. Now, therefore, what is under thy hand? So, now notice, we have to pay attention to what's going on. A Hamiliac ran into David. He had something in his hand. So, he had an And David, now, now, therefore, what is under thy hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand. Or what there is present. So now he has five loaves of bread in his hand. We're going to find out what this bread is and why is it such a significant role. And the priest answered and said, There is no common bread under my hand, but there is hollow bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women. So now he said, This is not regular bread in my hand, this is hollow bread. And we're going to find out what this hollow bread is in a second. Because all this and why the new moon cannot dictate the Sabbath. All this is going to tie into each other. And it says what? There is no common bread under my hand, but there is hollow bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women. Verse 5, and David answered the priest and said to him of a truth. Women have been kept of about these three days. So notice that. Chapter 20. David went on the run from Saul. He left Saul's presence in Gabeah. That's where Saul was ruling at. So in Gabeah, it's been three days since chapter 20. Now, mind you, 1 Samuel 20 and 24, it was the new moon. Now, this is only three days later from the new moon. And it says what? And the priest, 1 Samuel 20, 24, and the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under my hand, but there is hollow bread. If the young women have kept themselves at least from women. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth, women have been kept from us about these days since I came out. And the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in a manner made, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. So the priest gave him hollow bread. For there was no bread there but the shoe bread. Now this is the key crucial part. It was the shoe bread that was taken from before the Lord. So now we're going to understand what day this was. That it was taken before the Lord. To put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. So now David, so just to sum up what's going on. David was on a run from the from the fall. The new moon had just passed. Three days later after the new moon, he ran into the sanctuary. And met the high priest who was carrying shoe bread. He said, this is not common bread in my hand. This is hollow bread, which turned out to be shoe bread. He said, I'll give it to you guys if y'all kept yourself clean. So now what? David said, yes, we kept ourselves clean. So now what's going on? He said, what? We, we've been holy. He's passed three days. Three days past the new moon. So it says what? And verse 6 is more important. It says what? So the priest gave him hollow bread. For there was no bread there but the shoe bread. Take it before the Lord. What day is that? That they take it before the Lord. Let's go to Luke 24. And we're going to show how the new moon cannot dictate the Sabbath. How the Sabbath is on the seventh midweek, Friday night to Saturday night, because this day was the day that the priest was eating the shoe bread. Leviticus chapter 24. You got anything to add? You can jump in anytime. You got anything to add? <clears throat> uh -oh, go ahead. Leviticus 24, and I'll start at verse 1. And the Lord spake to Moses, command the children of Israel, they bring us the beaten for the light, without the veil, the testimony of the tabernacle of the congregation shall err and order it, evening until the morning for the Lord continually. It shall be a statute forever. He shall order the lamp upon pure candlestick with the pigling of the curse. Remember what it says in verse 3. It says, what? He shall, verse uh, 2 and 3, it says, He shall cause the lamp to burn continually. It what? They shall be before the Lord. And it's going to tell you, it's going to tell you what day this was. That this is all the stuff that was performed before. Verse 4. He shall order the upon the poor, the pure. Okay, so these are the manure. So when you want, when you understand, hey, where you at? Numbers. From, these are where the manures come from. Why? When you read in Exodus and Numbers, the Most High 
order them to make it short. But the candlestick with three three branches on the left, branches on the right, the middle, sure what? Set the head north, but on the north. So when you see Jewish people having eight, nine, ten candlesticks, where are they getting that from? In Exodus and Numbers, it says you should make the candlestick three branches on the left, one in the middle, three on the right. That's their what? That's what John the Revelator saw in uh, Revelation 1. So I saw the figure like the Son of Man, the seven candlesticks, of the menorah. So people that say the menorah is not biblical, the candlestick was in the sanctuary in the temple is the menorah. Now, what was that? Each of the lamps upon the candlestick, on the market these lamps should burn the candlestick. He shall, uh, and thou shalt Understand this, and that says what? And thou shalt them in two rooms table before the Lord, and thou shalt pour frankincense upon each row that it may be on the bread for a memorial, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So now, what is this going to talk about? This is going to go into what? Well, what is verse eight say? Every Sabbath shall he set in order before the Lord continue. We can take it from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. So when is this festival to be performed? Verse 8. Every Sabbath shall he set in order before the Lord continually, being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. Verse 9. And it shall be Aaron and his sons, and they shall eat it. So that's why I said, remember who Hamiliac is in 1 Samuel 21. He was a high priest that year. So Hamiliac was the high priest. So it says, verse 9, the shoe bread is supposed to be upon who? Aaron and his sons. And they shall eat it in the holy place. For it is most holy unto him are the offerings of the Lord made by fire by a perpetual statute. So we read here, the shoe bread is served to the high priest for offering every Sabbath. We have to understand this. So now going back to 1 Samuel 21, we understand in verse 20, chapter 20, verse 24, that it was the new moon indeed was that day. Three days later, he traveled from Gibeah, because that's where Saul's kingdom was at, to Nu, which was, I don't know if it was a the journey from, from the map that I saw, but three days later, David ended up in the sanctuary with the high priest Amiliac, and he asked for the shoe bread that was in the high priest's hand. And the priest gave him the shoe bread, which was what? To be offered upon the that's why I said what? Verse 6, 1 Samuel 21 and 2. So the priest gave him hollow bread, for there was no bread there but the shoe bread that was taken from before the Lord. So this was what? So David ran to him, it would be safe to say, on the Sabbath day. He ran into the sanctuary on the Sabbath day, because why? It was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. So there was what? This got done getting fresh bread. Which we just read in Leviticus 24. Happened upon what? On the Sabbath. And let it be what? Established for two or three witnesses. Let's go to 1 Chronicles 9. We got anything to ask? Let's go to Chronicles. Nope. Let's go 1 Chronicles 9. Yeah, 1 Chronicles 9. Is anybody else lagging real bad, or is it just me? Uh, it's probably mine. I just turned my Wi-Fi on, so that should make it better. The internet was was a little choppy. Okay. Nine still away. lagging? Um, not much. Okay. And it said First Chronicles chapter nine, verse thirty-two, and the other 
of their brethren of the sons of the Kohathites were over the shewbread to prepare it every Sabbath. So it says what? They prepared the shewbread every Sabbath. So they made it hot, fresh shewbread for the who? For the high priest to eat. For Aaron and his son. So for the priest and the high priest. So we read in 1 Samuel 21, David asked Hamiliac, who was the high priest at the time that Saul was ruling, he was the high priest who had the shoe bread. So it is said to say that on the Sabbath day, David ran to the sanctuary, the tabernacle, and had it for the shoe bread. Only the high priest was supposed to eat. But we need to say in um, Samuel 20, three days prior to that, it was the new moon. So how can the new moon dictate the Sabbath? If the new moon is just three days prior and the Sabbath is now on the third day. That's why sometimes we have the new moon on the Sabbath day. We have the new moon before the Sabbath. We have the Sabbath day and then we got the new moon proceeding the day later. Sometimes it's a day of Sabbath because why? The new moon does not dictate the Sabbath. And as we go further into the future, we see because why? And then we have the other two. The Most High made the moon on the fourth day, and on the seventh day he rested and sanctified that day. The Most High is not the author of confusion. If the moon was dictated, I mean the Sabbath was dictated by the new moon, it would be written in the scripture. Instead of having the good and the scripture, it would be written in the book of 23. And the Sabbath also dictated by the moon. But it's not in there because why? It's a set apart, sanctified day. But it's not dictated by the Sabbath. I mean, by the new city. Happy Sabbath, sister. Glad to see you in line. I'm going to tell you. Now, before I go to that, you know, I'm going to go to the Sabbath. Did you want to go about how Christ the first and two Christ are breaking the Sabbath? And he brought up the example of David. Or did you want to go to the Sabbath? Uh, yeah, go ahead and get the, the one about David. I'll read both of them. I'll read Mark 12 and Mark 2. I mean, Matthew 12 and Mark 2. Because we just read it anyways. Now, this also, it can be taken both ways, but the way that I read it, the way I'm seeing it, is making an example. And you'll see what I'm coming from when I read it. I'm going to read in Mark chapter 12. I mean, excuse me, Matthew chapter 12, verse 1. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungry and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. Now, mind you, this is on the Sabbath day. Now, we're going to see what Christ, example that Christ did that he gave the Pharisees. Verse 2, but when the Pharisees saw it, they had said unto him, Behold, that disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. So mind you, this is the Sabbath, and the Pharisees told them that this is not mindful to do on the Sabbath. And let's see what Christ said to them or what example he gave. Verse 3, but he said unto them, have you not read what David did when he was a hunger and that they were with him, how he entered into the house of God and did eat the shoe bread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? So, when you read this, you got to understand why did he give the example of David eating the shoe bread from the priest. Okay, they're breaking, they said, the Pharisees accused them of breaking the Sabbath by plucking the corn, off of the stalk of corn on the Sabbath day. They accused them of doing work. But why would, why would, the, why would Christ give the Pharisees the example of David eating the shoe bread from the priest? And why would he say that? Have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Because why? When you go back and read First Samuel 21, when David ate the shoe bread, the shoe bread was offered up on the Sabbath day. So what? Did David eat the Sabbath because he went into the um because he was a hunger and he went into the sanctuary on the Sabbath day to eat the shoe bread from the high priest? And was he, did he break the law? Did the priests break the law because they gave David the shoe bread? Or were they supposed to let him down? Or was David supposed to be like, oh, 
I'm starving to death. The only thing I see is a shoe bread, but I can't eat it, so I'm just going to die. Because no, the most I have mercy upon whom he have mercy on. That's why he gave the example, because when all this took place on the Sabbath day. I'm going to read the other version in, in Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2 and 23. And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day, and his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? And he said unto them, Have you never read what David did when he had need and was in hunger? And when he, um, he and they were with him, how when he went into the house of God and the days of Abathar the high priest and did eat the shoe bread, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priest and gave also them which were with him. And he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the son of man is Lord also of the Sabbath. So Christ is showing what? Given two analogies. He's showing that he is the Lord of the Sabbath. That the Sabbath was not made for man, but man for the Sabbath. So the Sabbath was made for us to do what? To rest, to relinquish all our work. Because why? In six days should I do all our labor. But the seventh day, which is the Sabbath day, is the day of rest. Now Christ is coming to show you that now he is even Lord of the Sabbath. That he has control of what can be and cannot be done on the Sabbath. That's why he said what? He told the Pharisees in John, you call you hypocrite. You accusing me of breaking the Sabbath for healing this man on the Sabbath, but don't when your ox go out and tread the field and get stuck in a hole, do you not uh, burden yourself and get the ox out the hole on the Sabbath day? But you accusing me of breaking the Sabbath for healing this man on the Sabbath? You call them hypocrite. So now he's telling you and Mark that he is Lord of the Sabbath. Because why? Through him, the Most High showed us that through Christ has the power to forgive sins and heal the sick. Not just the Most High alone. Now through His Son, He can what? Have the power to forgive sin and heal the sick. According to what? Isaiah 53. He took upon us, I mean upon Him, our infirmities. We have to understand that. You got anything to go to the next one? Yeah. How uh, it says, verse 25. It's just to let you know that it was talking about the Sabbath day. <clears throat> because, of course, the showbread was prepared on the Sabbath day, right? But look at how uh, he said, and and he said unto them, Have ye never read what David did when he had need? What does that mean? When he had need on the Sabbath day. I think we lost the brother again. Back on here. We lost the brother. Waiting for the brother to get back on his phone. Probably died. But what the brother was saying. Saying what? The shoe bear was prepared on the Sabbath. According to what Leviticus 23, I mean, excuse me, Leviticus 24 and 1 Chronicles 9, how it was prepared on the Sabbath. And what? Let's go to Numbers chapter 4. Is it Numbers 4? And let's see also another about the shoe bread. Numbers chapter 4. Well, this one doesn't say. It was on the Sabbath, like Leviticus 24, but this is the um, ordinances, how they set up the shoe bread. Numbers chapter 4, and I'll start at verse 1. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Take the sum of the sons of Kohath from among the sons of Levi, after the families by the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, even until fifty years old, all that enter into the host to do the work in the tabernacle of the congregation. This shall be the service of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the congregation about the most holy things. So these sons of Kohath of the tribe of Levi was uh, ordained to do special things. And when the camp set it forward, Aaron shall come and his sons, and they shall take down the covering veil and the covering of the ark of the testimony with it, and shall put thereon the covering of badger skin, and shall spread over the cloth holy of blue, and shall put in the stage thereof. And upon a table of shoe bread, they shall spread a cloth of blue, and upon and put upon the dishes and the spoons and the bowls and covers to cover with all. And the continual bread shall be their own, and they shall spread upon them a cloth of scarlet, and cover the same with the covering of badger skin, and shall put it in the stage thereof. So all this was supposed to be done upon the Sabbath day for offering to what? To the high priest. That's what we have to understand. So all this was done. The high priest upon the Sabbath day, they prepared all this stuff for the high priest. So now when Christ is saying, when the Pharisees accuse Christ of breaking the Sabbath, he said, don't you know what David did upon the Sabbath day? When he went into the sanctuary, ate the shoe bread? Hello, can you hear? Yeah, I'm just sitting up here talking. What happened? The the whole the thing that went out. I don't know. This the whole yeah the whole video is gone. But I uh I, I think I picked up where you was trying to go. But you can you can pick up what you were saying. I think I covered it though. But you can go. Okay, ja, I was just saying. Shit, I don't know where where got dropped off. Anyway, I was just saying how we in Christ. This is the doctrine of Christ. How in the other places that I would have mercy and not sacrifice. Them, the priests knew even back then that the Sabbath was made for us to rest, not for you to starve. You know what I'm saying? Not for you and all the people to starve. So they said, well, if at least y'all have been clean for a while, then I'll give it to you. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, they, so they did this holy and they worked it out and, and they, you know what I'm saying? They did it like that so that they was merciful to David and not, you know what I'm saying, cause him to be afflicted and not rest on the Sabbath day. And I know, you know, what we're talking about is the uh, Sabbath day not being determined by the new moon, and we're talking about the law. But I'm glad we um, came to the scripture here so that we could, uh, you know, make sure that we also bring up Christ and, how, and, what, and what his doctrine is uh, pertaining to the Sabbath and the law and also... You know what what God said about being merciful to each other, just to make sure that we, you know, that we constantly uh, remember in Christ and His words, because we keep the law of God, and we do not break the Sabbath, but it's about rightly dividing the word of truth. Right? If there is a need, like He said, when David had need on the Sabbath day, they gave him something to eat, which wasn't lawful for him to eat. But what? God will have mercy and not sacrifice. Um, that's what he said to the Pharisees. Y'all tithing, mint, anise, and cumin, and all that stuff. But you omit the weightier matters of the law. Like what they're doing right here. They're saying uh, you breaking the Sabbath because you're going through the corn, plucking the ears of corn, and all that stuff. Like that. These people are hungry. We're supposed to starve because it's the Sabbath day? That's not rest. They're causing people to be afflicted. And to mourn on the Sabbath days and on the feast days and on God's holy days where there was supposed to be uh, the joy of the Lord. And it's not supposed to be like that. So just, just bringing it together with the law and Christ and how it works together and what we're supposed to see it as. You know what I'm saying? Don't break God's Sabbath day, but also remember to be merciful and what, which is the way to your matter of the law. You know what I'm saying? If you can avoid cooking something on the Sabbath when you see somebody hungry or buying something on the Sabbath when you don't have to, then avoid it. But if you cannot and something must be done, then what are you going to do? Are you going to watch somebody starve until the sun go down? Are you going to make somebody fast? 
You know what I'm saying? When they have not sinned, you're going to make somebody afflict their soul when they ain't did no sins? Or are you going to do what's good and right to your brother or sister or whatever and pray the Lord God be merciful? Anyway, go ahead. Right. I'm going to read from... Uh, what's book? I'm going to read from this book. Yeah, Mark, yeah I finished, Mark. I'm going to read from this book real quick called The Hellenistic Age, The World History of the Jewish People, from Political History of Jewish Palestine from 332 to 67 BCE. And this was during the time of the, the Maccabees and after the Maccabees when John Hycranus came into power, who was the nephew of Judas Maccabees and how they set up the sect of the Pharisees. And I'm going to show you how if you are, according to the account from the biblical records, how the Pharisees and Sadducees kept the records in the account, if you are celebrating the Sabbath by the new moon, you are calculating the feast days wrong, and hence you are you will be getting the Feast of Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks on the wrong day if you are celebrating this. We page 245, it says... Page 240, um, page 243, and it says chapter 10, page 243. And this is the life of the Pharisees. The Pharisees that just came into power, they have money and dynasty, they rule, and they have just replaced the Sadducees. Uh, the history of the Sadducees, I'm going to get a lesson on that, but a brief rundown. The Sadducees were brought into power during the time of Ezra and Nehemiah during the um, building of the Second Temple. They were consisted of Levites, Moses, Levites, and some Judites and Benjamin. But it was mostly Levites, and they were uh, the ruling class at that time because they didn't have any king. You know, the Levites and you know, some Judites and Benjamin banded together and they were the called the Sadducees, and they were would be considered the high official power of court order people, and they will be handling the affairs of the people. So that was the Sadducees that came about right during the building of the Second Temple with Nehemiah and Ezra. So now this is, this is the rise of the Pharisees, and this is what happened. In any case, during Salome's reign, the aristocrat Sadducees were gradually removed from the Sanhedrin and replaced by Pharisees. And the Sadducee Book of the Kings was abolished. Abogration of the Sadducee ruling that the Shabbat, meaning the Pentecost or Feast of Week, holiday always be observed on a Sunday, i.e. giving a literal interpretation to the biblical from the moral Sabbath, apparently dates from this period. An allusion to this has been preserved in the Talmud. Four holidays were proclaimed to commemorate the triumph of the Pharisees over the Sadducees. On the 14th of Talmud, the Sadducees' Book of Decrees was set aside. On the 24th of the month, Eve, Eve, we return to our laws, i.e. the Pharisees once again judged in accordance with their laws and not those of the Sadducees. And on the 28th of Tevet, the assembly, the Sanhedrin, set in judgment, i.e. the Pharisees entered the Sanhedrin in place of the Sadducees. And finally, from the 8th of the month, Nisan until the end of the Passover, the Feast of Shabbat was restored. The connection between the eighth month and Passover is to be found in Josephus. At that time, the people were assembled for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. On the eighth of the month, Nisan. In those days, the two weeks from the new moon of Nisan until Passover were apparently regarded as belonging to Passover. Now, as we understand this, if you, I want, to, I want to touch on it now, but we're going to touch on it more a little bit. If you are following a lunar Sabbath, according to their logic, the new moon dictates the Sabbath. Yeah. You have the new moon. A week later from that, you have the seven-day Sabbath. A week after that, you have the 14th day, which will be a Sabbath, which will be a full moon. Then you have the 21st day. The moon is winding down, turning into another moon. And then you have the 28th day, which will go back into another new moon. So according to that logic, 
the 14th day of that Sabbath is going to be a full moon. And if we go by that logic, then Passover should always be on the Sabbath day. Tabernacle should be always on the Sabbath day. And Purim should be always on the Sabbath day. But we're going to see, according to the scripture, that that's not possible. And it says, or going back to the book, it says, In those days, the two weeks from the new moon of Nisan until Passover were apparently regarded as belonging to Passover. And as for the restoration of Shabbat festival to its former glory, Demonberg has already pointed out that the expression was restored, and the Aramaic original proves that Shabbat had previously been observed in accordance with the opinion of the Sadducees, and that in his existence was later restored to conform to the interpretation of the Pharisees. As a matter of fact, we know that John Hyrcanus, who was still the vessel of Antiochus the Didis, and as much as required, assist him in his war against the Parthenians, Antiochus halted for two days on the banks of the Lucas River at the request of the Jew, John Hycranus, because of the festival of his nation, which was not customary for the Jews to march. And since those days, no holiday in Palestine was observed for two consecutive succe days, not even the new year, Josephus, who cites Nicolaus of Damascus, as a source for this episode, had to explain in the year in question, Shabbat, Shabbat fell on the Sunday, so that the Jews could not travel neither on the holiday itself nor on the Sabbath, which immediately preceded it. So now here, it says what? That the Feast of Week fell on the Sunday, immediately after the Sabbath. And we're going to explain it in the second. So if you are following the new moon, as the, the Sabbath for the new moon, the new moon that takes the Sabbath, we can we see here, according to Jewish records, that can't be the case because why? The Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, has to fall on the Sunday. If you follow the new moon, the lunar Sabbath, the Sabbath can be any day of the week because the new moon could be on the Monday, new moon could be on the Tuesday, could be on the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, etc. So if you once you calculate the Feast of Weeks, Count those seven weeks so 50 days. How are you getting the Feast of Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks to fall on the Sunday if the new moon falls on the Wednesday and the next Sabbath will be on the Wednesday and Passover will be that Wednesday in the month? So, how are you getting the Feast of Weeks to fall on the Sunday? It's not scripture. Did you want to did you, did you want to read John 19? All right. John 19. <clears throat> but the um, Sabbath, Christ crucified, and that Sabbath was a high day. Uh, 19 and 31. 19 and 31. 19. John 19 and 31. John 19 31. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was in high day. That Sabbath day was in high day. Uh, they sought Pilate that their, that their legs might be broken. And that they might, and that they might be taken away. So, it was the preparation for the Sabbath, meaning the seventh day, the seventh day of the week, coming up. And then they say that that Sabbath was a high day. Why was the Sabbath a high day? Because, and uh, we're gonna look at it in Leviticus, how the feast of first fruits was celebrated after um, during the Passover they, they were celebrating the Feast of First Fruits during the Passover and that's when they started counting uh, the 49 days or the 50 days to get to the Feast of Pentecost this high day that it's talking about right here is the Feast of First Fruits which is not the same as the day of Pentecost 
Let me see. So this also, um, I didn't quite catch everything you were saying before this. So this, but this also show you that the the seventh day is not uh, uh, dictated by the new moon. It's not determined by the new moon because the Passover, which was the fourteenth day of the month, has is already passed, and now it's fitting to be the Sabbath day. The seventh day of the week, which they call the high day. So it's not, it, it's not, it ain't possible. Um, you want any more in this, John, or you want to go to? No, I was going to bring that out. Like you said, if the, if the Sabbath is dictated by the new moon, technically, Passover shall fall on a Sabbath day, on a Sabbath day, because it, it is the 14th day at even. So technically, if you go by the new moon, the 14th day, will be a Sabbath. So, but it says here in John 19 that he died before the Sabbath. He was crucified on the Passover and he died before the Sabbath. So how can, um, how can the new moon take the Sabbath and the Tuesday fall on the Sabbath and Christ was crucified and the Sabbath day was coming up? Now God's will be true in every man alive. So the scriptures say what it say. You can't get around the scripture. Go ahead. Uh, let me get Leviticus. The book of Leviticus chapter twenty-three. That's too much noise over. Leviticus twenty-three. Let me see. Verse 10. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 10. And it's already it's talking about the feasts that are to be proclaimed in their season. Okay. Um, so the feast of first fruit, it already done went over the Passover already in Leviticus 23. Uh, it's already gone over the Passover once you once you get past verse. When you get there in the verse ten, is that what? Uh, so verse nine, I'm saying it's already it's already talked about the Passover. So the the Passover is the first uh, feast in the first season, in the first month. Yeah, the Passover is in the the first month of month of the year. So in the first season. Now this feast of Pentecost. Uh, it's in that same season. In number start of verse ten, speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits, the first fruits of your harvest unto the priests. That's why it's called the first fruits. And he shall wave, he shall wave the sheep before the Lord uh, to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. So he's saying the day that it's supposed to be offered, these first fruits are supposed to be offered. On the morrow after the Sabbath. But pay attention to what he said up here. He says, speak unto the, in verse 10, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when ye be come into the land, I mean, we're still in the wilderness, and he said to them, when you come into the land of Canaan to take it over, which, which I give unto you and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. Now let me go down here. Uh, he shall wave it on the morrow after the Sabbath. On the morrow after the Sabbath. We're going to figure out what that morrow after the Sabbath was. Verse 12. And ye shall offer that day when ye wave, uh, when ye wave it, when ye wave the sheaf 
And and he lamb without blemish of the first year and for a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the meat offering, hold on, let me get down, let me go down. Verse 14. And ye shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, nor green ears, until the self same day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. Excuse me, I got to sneeze. And all your dwellers. So, uh, uh, ready or not. And so, he, that's, that's the part I want to pay attention to. He said, you shall eat neither bread, corn, green ears, and all that stuff until the day that you brought the offering. Meaning what? Do not eat no uh, bread and corn and all that stuff until the morrow after the Sabbath. Right? Until the morrow after the Sabbath. Judges chapter 5. Judges chapter 5, verse... Joshua. Joshua 5. Joshua chapter 5, verse 10. <clears throat> and the children of Israel encamped. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at even in the plains of Jericho, like the commandment has said, right? They kept it on the 14th day at even, meaning going into the 15th day of the month uh, is, is the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Okay, verse 11. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self, excuse me, in the self same day. So, in Leviticus, when it said on the morrow after the Sabbath, and he said you don't eat no corn and, and stuff like that until uh, uh, stuff like it until that day. He was talking about the morrow after the Passover. I mean, after the 15th day of the month. The 14th day is uh, the 14th day of the month is the day where you get the uh, leaven out of your houses and then in the evening you kill the Passover going into the 15th day. You kill the lamb going into the 15th day and that is the first day of the feast of unleavened bread and also called the Passover. That is the Sabbath. That's the first uh, Sabbath in the 15th day. On the morrow after the Sabbath, which is now the 16th day, is when they brought the, the, the first fruits. The first fruits. And when they ate the, you know, the parched corn and all that stuff like that. So, Now, in Leviticus 23. In Leviticus 23. So on that morrow after the Sabbath, after the Passover, after that Sabbath, which is the first day of the feast. The first day of the feast is the Sabbath. So on the second day of the feast was the uh, first fruits. Now, when you back in John, uh, John 19, that's why he said that Sabbath, was a high day. That Sabbath was a high day. And it was the day that they was commanded to bring the the first fruits offering after the Passover. So the Passover, which was which is a Sabbath, is passed. And now uh, in comes the, the seventh day of the, of the week, which is a Sabbath. And that had it, it happened to fall like that, which also, that's, that's why we read it, to show you that the new moon does not determine when the seventh day of the week is. Because the Passover occurred before um, the seventh day Sabbath, okay, which happened to be, which was the high day because it fell on first fruits. That first fruits fell on that Sabbath. So, Verse 15, and ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, 
from the day that she brought the sheaf of the offering, uh, from the day you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Uh, you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering. So, after that day, hey, on, let Stephanie, after that day, after the day of first fruits, is when you start counting for um, your seven weeks. And uh, in John, it happened to fall on the Sabbath day. So they started counting, you know, after that. Um, because you, it's got, it's got to fall out on a Sunday. And I'll show you why. Seven Sabbaths, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. And that's why, right there. Seven Sabbaths, Sabbaths have to be complete. Verse 16. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days. And ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Um, ye shall bring out your, ye shall bring out of your habitation two, two wave loaves or two tenth deals. They shall be uh, fine flour. They shall be uh, bacon with leaven. So this is now after the feast of unleavened bread. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. And ye shall offer with the bread seven. Seven lambs, seven lambs without blemish of the first year, and one young bullock and two rams. They shall be, they shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord with their meat offering and their drink offering, even an offering made by fire of sweet savor unto the Lord. Um, then you shall. Okay, I wasn't gonna read all that. Uh, Verse 21, and ye shall proclaim on the self same day, ye shall proclaim on the self same day that it may be an holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no servile work therein, it shall be a, a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. So after that day, after the day where you uh, bring the first fruits of your harvest, the day after the Passover, on that morrow after the Sabbath, you then start to number from the nearest seventh day Sabbath. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete so that you reach uh, 50 days and the morrow after the seventh Sabbath is going to be what? The first day of the week. Pentecost is going to always be on the first day of the week after the Sabbath. Um, but this is mainly just to show how the Sabbath day is the Sabbath day. Uh, in days, days came before the month. Days and weeks came before the month. Uh, you got anything else? Yeah, I just want to touch more on John 19 because um, a lot of people will say that verse in verse 31, John 19, the one in parentheses that was added in there for confusion. But when you study the scripture and precept upon precept and uh, study to show yourself approved, the verses when it says, for this was a Sabbath was a high day, was not added in there. Because why? When you just read, simply read Leviticus 23, it tells you that that Sabbath after the Passover is going to be what? The tomorrow after the Sabbath is going to be the first fruits. And a lot of Israelites, they teach that Pentecost and first fruits, or the Feast of Weeks and first fruits, are the same feast days. When you read Leviticus 23, like the brother just went over, they're clearly not. And we have to understand also Christ rose. First fruits. That's why he is called the first fruits. And when you read in, look at that in uh, Corinthians, First Corinthians 15, and Christ is called the first fruit of being that rose. Why is he called the first fruit? Because why? Remember, he is the shadow, the law is the shadow of good things to come. We have to understand that. First Corinthians 15, and I start at verse 
Corinthians 15 and 14. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised, whom he raised not up, if so be that Christ, that the dead raised not. And if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are not yet, you are yet in your sin. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in the life only we hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. Now verse 20 is the one that's important. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So now that every man in his order, Christ, the first fruit, afterward, they are Christ, they are Christ at his coming. So we have to understand what? Christ is what? The good thing, the shadow of good things to come. We understand, according to 1 Corinthians 5, John 1, Peter is what? Chapter 1, Christ was that lamb. Christ was that lamb without blemish, that sacrificial lamb. First Corinthians 5, Christ is the Passover sacrifice for us. But also, First Corinthians 15, Christ is also the first fruit. Why? Because he rose at the end of the Sabbath going into the first what first day of the week. That would be what? Bring it into what? First fruit. And it so happened, like the brother said in John 19, that the Passover was either on the Wednesday or Thursday. And that Sabbath, that seventh day Sabbath, this happened to be the first going into the first fruit and going into the first fruit at that Saturday at evening going into the first day of the week when you read in Matthew when Mary Magdalene came to look at the tomb Christ was already risen so he rose on what on the first fruit that's why when they came into the tomb on the the dawn of the morning on the first day of the week which was on a Sunday he was already gone we have to understand that let me read what Josephus said about the first, the week of first fruits, because like I said, there's a lot of confusion on when is first fruits. Because a lot of Israelites teach that the first fruit and Pentecost or the feast of weeks are the same feast day, which they are not. When you read in Leviticus 23, I'm reading um, the book of Josephus and chapter 10. The, in, the antiquities of the Jews on page 96. If for anybody that has the book, they want to read it themselves on page 96. Paragraph 250, on the second day of unleavened bread, so on the 16th, the first month, on the 16th day, on the first month, but on the second day of unleavened bread, which is the 16th day of the month, they first partake of the fruit of the earth. For before that day, they did not touch them. And while they suppose it proper to honor God, from whom they obtained the plentiful, plentiful provision, in the first place, they offered the first fruit of their barley. And then that man of falling, they take a handful of ears and dry them and beat them small and purge the barley from the brand. The brand. And we do this. We do this 23. They will bring one tenth deal to the altar to God and cast in one man to the fire. They leave the bread for the use of the tree. And after that, they may publicly or privately reap their harvest. They also, at this participation of the first fruits of the earth, Sacrifice a lamb as a burnt offering to God. Now, then we just read that. Mm -hmm. Leviticus 23. So, the point I wanted to bring up is, like the brother said, if the new moon, the Sabbath is dictated by the new moon, then why was Passover before the Sabbath in John 19? According to the new moon, it will be the new moon, the, next, the seventh day will be the Sabbath, the next seventh day will be the 14th day. Of the month, which would be the full moon, and then the next 14th day, I mean, the next seventh day would be the 21st day, and then the next seventh day would be the 28th day. But the Hebrew calendar has 28 or give or take 29 days. So, if you are following the lunar Sabbath, how do you accommodate for that 29th day, and how can you or how would you explain the council would not fall on the Sabbath? Since the Passover is at the 14th day of even, unleavened bread is on the 15th day. The 14th day, according to the new moon, will be a Sabbath. I ain't got nothing really else to go on unless you got something else to touch. I don't have to touch the topic. Mm -mm.
Is that him? No. All right, well, I pray, brothers and sisters, that this class is edifying and yeah, hopefully it's clear and straight to the point about how the new moon cannot dictate the Sabbath. We went over the scriptures. Let God's word be true and every man a lie out of mouth of two or three witnesses. We went through a couple books with the scriptures to show that the new moon cannot dictate the Sabbath and that the feast day, the feast of weeks should always fall tomorrow after the Sabbath, which should be the first day of the week. The point to this calendar will be a Sunday. So, Lord willing, this class was edifying, and y'all learn from this class. I pray y'all enjoy the rest of y'all Sabbath. Peace be upon you all. Peace.